If you want something that looks like a fairy tale in your house, then simply make a terrarium. I went away for just one week, one week only, and 60% of my terrarium plants didn't even make it. So if we want the rest to remain alive, we have to do something right here, right now. We are going to remove any dead plants, we are going to add some new ones and fix the substrate because it is a mess. Also, we are going to talk about some common houseplants that you can use to make a terrarium and why you should try to make a terrarium if you are a plant parent that haven't tried it yet. So now let me show you what we are facing today so I can prepare you. This is the terrarium. At the back right corner we have an asparagus fern which is almost all yellow. The fern on the back I think that is completely dried out. I don't know if this can be saved. The calathea for some reason and the spider plant are doing great. They are thriving, which is weird. And the ivy in the front is completely dead. I didn't have any hopes on this because it was struggling from the day that I bought it. Oh, look, a shrimp. Anyway, let me move the terrarium to a better place and start working on it to revive it. Long story short, I had to go out of town for some things for a week and I didn't get the chance to take care of my plants before leaving, so my anxiety was right because indeed I had some problems when I returned. Okay, first of all, let's remove the ivy. It is completely dead. What is this? completely dead. Look at this mess. This asparagus fern was doing really well. If I didn't forget to water it, it would still be fully green. You should never postpone taking care of your plants because if they end up like this, I'm sure that you will regret it. Some leaves from the calathea are also dead, so... It needs some pruning. Let me also remove this moss wood. Right now I want to remove the bulk of the yellow parts of the asparagus fern. If your branches are still green, don't remove them even if the leaves are yellow because they might give you some new growth. Asparagus ferns are really cute and they look minimal yet elegant and the only problem you might have is that if you underwater them they will turn yellow and if you do not provide enough light then they will become leggy. Terrariums are wonderful, you can make so many things, you just need to be creative, you can create mini deserts, you can create forests, you can create mountains, whatever you can imagine, there is a way to create it into terrariums. So don't be afraid to create a terrarium, just try a lot of times and experiment and see what fits you the best and what type of terrariums you like the most. For example, I know that I love a lot of mosses in my terrariums, so maybe I will create an only moss terrarium in the future. Open terrariums are easier than closed terrariums because in closed terrariums you have to set the humidity right. If you do it wrong, then your plants will rot before you even know it. But for open terrariums you can Simply just try, experiment and see what is working. There are so many types of containers that you can use to create a terrarium from a simple vase to a glass bottle to an aquarium or even an IKEA cabinet. Anything that is yellow won't come back to life so we can remove it. Asparagus ferns are great plants for terrariums because they love humidity. Almost everything looks dead. Let's remove all these things from the soil. Continue removing. Thank you. 
I guess this fern is completely done. When I first made this terrarium, I had a draining layer here at the bottom. I had carbon and I had the soil, but throughout the years the soil went down and the whole thing mixed. So what I am going to do is lift the soil and put back a draining layer. Here at the front I have no roots at all. Spider plant roots. I want to add some more perlite on the soil. Add some more soil. Another great plant except asparagus ferns and ferns overall is phytonias. Phytonias are really beautiful. You might know them as nerve plants, polka dots. They are wonderful plants. This one is a bit dehydrated, but it will come back to life immediately when watered. If you don't water your phytonia in time, the plant itself will show you signs that it needs water. The leaves will start to droop and curl. Phytonias are the easiest plant maybe on the list because they just don't need anything. They just need a lot of water in order to thrive. I am going to plant a new fern there on the back. Ferns are my favorite plants because they have so many types, they look so green, they are just wonderful and they love humidity. Let's break the dirt a bit. I guess it's looking good here. If you want something really tropical, then parlor palms are your best friend. Now let's break the roots. Not the roots, let's break it apart. Parlor palms are like asparagus ferns, they love humidity and enough light for them to grow. If it wishes to be divided... I did it! Let's open a space here for it to leave. Divide it once more. Also, this is a way of propagating parlor palms. You could also add some carnivorous plants, but I recommend it for the terrariums that have a grow light above them because carnivorous plants need a lot of light. A lot of light. I want to add these on the back of the fern. Spider plants, as you can see, can thrive in terrariums, but you might face the problem that they grow so huge that they take most of the space of the terrarium. So you might have to remove some of them to return back a balance. Something that I would love to add in the future is a small Pilea aluminum plant because they look amazing, they make the terrariums look special. Pileas like aluminum plant are just like phytonias, they just need a lot of water and they look wonderful, a great way to add that spice in your terrariums. Calatheas are unique and they absolutely steal the soul because they have so many patterns and colors and you can make really great combinations. They make great additions for terrariums because they love moisture. These are pine chips that I am adding right now. A wonderful addition would be air plants because they look so unique but if you have a complex terrarium then they might give you a hard time because they do not like getting water on their crown, on their center. You can use baby tears to make a great and beautiful flooring on your terrarium. Mosses are the most magical creation in the whole nature because they are little ecosystems, they are a mini world and you can actually create a terrarium by just adding moss. 
So I believe that moss is something that is a standard to every terrarium, except if you make a terrarium with succulents, then there you won't add moss, but every other type of terrarium that needs moisture should have moss. Let's move the terrarium back to its place and check it out. It is actually pretty simple to make terrariums. You just need a draining layer, your substrate and your plants that love humidity. If I water my terrarium and see that there is already a layer of water here, then I won't water it more. I will simply wait for the water to evaporate and go back to the soil and then re-water it. If you love fairy tales, then terrariums are the best hobby for you.